on this video I'm going to do something a little bit different from my other videos. I'm going to do a voiceover of the process of changing my brake rotors and my brake pads. Um, first of all, I want to make sure you jack up the vehicle, uh, proper lifting points, use jack sense as you can see here on this video, and uh, make sure your vehicle is uh, safely supported uh, before you remove your wheels. Um, here I'm just using an uh, electric um, impact, removing all the lug nuts, and um, yeah, taking those off, taking off the wheel. So they're off, and uh, with the wheel off, it's uh, time to get started. All right, so I rotated the uh, the wheel hub so you can see the caliper a little bit better. Um, these Brembo brakes use these two pins you see here. These need to be removed with a punch tool, as you can see. And all you have to do is simply uh, hit them from the front side with the hammer. I have a little baby hammer here so I'll use that and a few uh, dental taps will back it out of position and that's used there to retain the, um, the brake pads onto the calipers themselves so you can see here just tap it out top one bottom one just gotta get those out And with the pins backed out, just have to pull on them from the back, use a little bit of force. As you can see here, I'm just gotta pull, there we go. First one's out. Bottom one has less tension, so that one slides out a little bit easier. Clip comes out, and now the pads are ready to be removed. Now, in this case though, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be backing these pads up, uh, because I'm gonna be replacing them with new pads. Um, you have worn down a little bit. So what I'll be doing here is releasing the um, leader valve there uh, to be able to pull those pads back and using this small bit of hose that I have so that I don't make any mess and get brake fluid all over my floor or the garage. So using screwdriver for tension, releasing the leader valve and that allows the pad to back out into the, uh, or rather the piston to back out. Uh, into the caliper gives me a lot more room to work with when I'm putting the new pads in. Um, these being Brembo's, uh, there is a second bleeder valve on the back side of it. So, doing that to the first one, and then I'll be doing the same process to the back one. I'm just making sure the pads are fully backed out. I'm sure this isn't the professional way of doing things, but it gets the job done. Brake fluid has the potential to be a bit corrosive, so um, when I remove this hose, I'm wiping everything down, making sure I don't leave any uh, brake fluid uh, behind on the nice red Brembo's. And again, now this is the same process for the backside, moving things around, applying the hose to the rear bleeder, and uh, just repeat the, the previous step. So now with the two pads being backed out, they come out very easily. There's the rear pad and the front side pad. Now you will notice my caliper is a little bit loose. That's because I did re-loosen the rear bolts that hold the caliper onto the hub. Um, yours will not be loose like that. Yours will be tight. 
um, but that's why mine was to be moving a little bit. And the pistons are fully retracted into the caliper. Uh, time to move on to the next step. So there are two screws that hold the brake rotor onto the hub. They serve literally no purpose that I know of other than holding it in place. Um, I guess it may help with assembly, it may help with normal vehicle process, but um, they should back out pretty easily, just as I did there. Then this would be a 17 millimeter uh, socket. There's two bolts that hold it up. Like I said, I pre-loosened mine. Uh, so there's one at the top, one at the bottom. And with that, the caliper should be able to be removed from the pad. Nothing else holds it in that place. And, uh, yeah, that's my head. My head. So here I walked away from the car a little bit. Um, I went to grab something to place the caliper onto. Um, I don't want to put too much stress on the line because once I remove it, it will be hanging from the brake line. And uh, don't want to risk damaging it, stretching it. Um, it's really anything. So grab this little stand here and the uh, caliper will now just rest on it as I finish the process. So it screws out, just pull on the rotor. It should come right out. If it doesn't, gotta give it a little bit of motivation, just like that. There we go. Just give it a little inspiration. Here it goes. So new rotor ready to go. I chose to go slotted, um, that's my personal preference, um, so people go slotted and drilled, other people go drilled, slotted is what I like, I like the look, I like the um, reasoning on why it's slotted. Now I just pointed out those two little screws, and we have to line it up not just with the five uh, bolts that hold the wheel on, but also two little retaining screws, gotta screw those back into place, back we put them there, so why not put them back. And a simple process of uh, putting those two 17 millimeter bolts back in. One at the bottom. Um, you do have to kind of position in the right spot as uh, if you push the caliper all the way into the rotor, it, it won't be properly lined up. Just gotta line it up, line up the top one, and uh, make sure you use the proper torque specs. Um, I don't have them here in front of me right now, but I will put them in the description below this video. Um, always, always, always use proper torque specs for any bolts anytime you're working on a vehicle, be it the wheels, um, calipers, or really anything else. Really.
All right, so time for the new pads here. Um, I did put the anti-squeal um, grease or whatever that is in the back side of it. Uh, make sure you place it right where it's gonna have contact with the brake caliper cylinders um, and then slide it into position. Should be relatively easy. Make sure you don't touch the back side of the pad and the front side. Uh, if you do get that uh, anti-squeal onto the, the pad itself, you can um, contaminate it you'll have a uh, breaking issues and uh, you definitely don't want to do that. So those, again, they just slide right back into position there, just like that. All right, so the pin there, I'm just setting it up, making sure the brake pads are lined up with where they're supposed to be. Just got to fiddle around with it a little bit. Uh, you'll see me do the bottom one and you'll see me do the top one as well. Go, gotta pull it just down, just a bit. Now I'm gonna use the retaining clip, um, but if you're as smart as I am, uh, you'll do it wrong. Uh, yeah, there we go. Back that out, slide it through first, just I'm doing here, and then slide the pin through. I'd like to say this was my uh, only fumble. Unfortunately, it was not. Um, you're about to see me struggle with uh, putting the top pin through for the next several minutes. I thought about editing um, my humorous mistake out, but I did not. And there I was just showing you an example of uh, they don't go that way, they go into the back. Um, but then, here you go. Enjoy me struggling. So after multiple failed attempts, I came to the conclusion that I would try from the top first. Uh, so here I am doing that, and then sliding that pin most of the way in, and then moving on to the bottom pin. Uh, realistically, there's there's no reason why that should be any different, uh, but that's the route I took. Uh, if you're hitting it like this with a hammer, like me, be careful. You don't want to chip the back of the caliper. Got some nice red paint on there. And now on to the bottom pin. Slip that through. And then at this point is when I decided that um, I was just going to have to give it a little bit of a motivation. As I did earlier. 
pin wasn't fully lined up, um, but it was mostly there. So at that point, uh, I decided to grab the hammer, give it that extra bit of motivation, and it kind of lined itself up as it was going in. Now again, don't want to chip it, so I grabbed the punch tool and then I used that to push the pin the rest of the way through. Um, push it all the way in, it kind of locks into position where it goes, and the uh, same thing needs to be done to the top pin as well. If you don't use a little baby hammer like I did, I'm sure this will go a lot quicker for you and a lot less taps. But there you go, both pins locked back into position. And that's it. That's all it takes. So that is it. Um, it is a rotor that is uh, coated in black zinc. Now as you drive, the surface area will wear well down and be just regular metal. Um, but I went with black zinc because I do want the center hub area and the outer edge to uh, be black uh, versus metal or have a rust on it when it rains. Um, just for it to be a cleaner look. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's the entire process. Alright, so I thought I'd throw this little clip here. Uh, as a reminder, please, please, please use proper uh, torque specs. Make sure you torque the wheels down properly as I'm doing here, use a cross pattern, then just go next, 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 get a few, skip one, go to the next, make sure they're properly torqued, and um, be safe guys. So this is the uh, rear wheel essentially the exact same process except this time I'm going to be doing just the rotor uh, not changing up the rear brake pads and uh, get started on that and the wheel comes off yes I have rear wheel spacers Go easy on me, um, you know, stance life, yo. So, if you're to show you guys the back of the uh, caliper here, there's one bolt there, and there's one more at the bottom. That's it, just two bolts, release them, and go. Same as before, two little screws holding in the brake order onto the hub. As with the front, just a little bit of motivation, just like that knocks the rotor loose. Let it move a little bit helps tap in those areas there, help loosen it up. And there it comes. Now, yeah, really, I mean, it looks easy. But when you flip it back, yeah, that took a much motivation. Uh, in this case, I really didn't care. I'm not reusing the rotors. Placing the new ones, so if they got damaged, wasn't a big deal. New rotors, same design as the front ones. Um, you do have to remove that little rubber grommet from the OEM ones, place it onto these replacements because they won't have it. And as before, make sure you just battle the line up with the five bolts, but you also line up with where the two screws go.
that's it, reverse. So we'll put those two back in there and put the caliper back into position. Just like so, slide it in. Put the two bolts that hold it in. Again, make sure you torque it to spec. I will include those at the bottom of the video. So if you need that, it is there. And the glue goes back on. Same as before guys, um, before you put all the weight on the vehicle or you decide you want to drive on it, make sure that you not just tighten down the lug nuts but you also torque them down the spec as I'm doing here. Make sure you use the cross pattern to properly torque them down and use the proper torque rating and I will go ahead and list that down at the bottom uh, below the video. And then right after this guys you're going to see two pictures, uh, one I took right after installing the rotors and then one after driving it for a little bit and wearing down that zinc coating where, it where the rotor contacts the pad.